I could be still planning mm. to launch this business. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we've been planning for maybe six to eight months of full-on planning, and at the end, we just said we just bit the bullet and said, "This is the date we're going to launch. We are going now," and nice. we did it. Um, have I made the right decision? Time will tell. <laughs> did I make a ton of mistakes between then and now? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, probably every mistake I think I could make. You can roll on in. There's a table waiting free for wine. you. There's free wine. <laughs> there's people. You know, coming to shake your hand, it's, yeah. it's you know, think twice before jumping into hospitality <laughs> if you think that's the dream, because I can tell you, yeah. with uh, a lot of experience, that it's certainly not that. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work. Today we're joined by a man who has definitely been bitten by the business bug. Cam Northway from Cocktail Porter and a number of other hospitality ventures joins us to talk through his story. We dive into how he's launched four, soon to be five, successful ventures in the hospitality space. We talk about technology and the new changes coming into the industry and we also touch on the importance of getting mentors and how they can help guide your way through building a business. If you're in the hospitality space or you want to know about how to launch and run multiple successful businesses, this is a must listen. I absolutely love this interview and I know you will too. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of the Make It Happen show. I'm joined by Cam Northway. Cam, welcome. Thanks very much for having me. It's really good to be here. Really great to have you here because I'm super interested to hear your journey. You've got not one, not two, not three, but four successful hospitality-based businesses on the go already. That's right. How yep. on earth do you make all of that happen? Well, uh, not easy. Not <laughs> I'm a sucker for punishment. Um, <laughs> uh, unfortunately for me, I think I've chosen the hardest route. Uh, they're not all five restaurants or five bars that uh, you know, can be easy to run. Um, they are five completely different animals. They're in five very much different parts of the world with different time zones. So how do I do it? Uh, you know, it hasn't been easy, let yeah. me tell you. Like, to start with, it has not been easy. It's been a lot of hard work. You are looking amazingly fresh <laughs> for a man with all that going on. Thank you very much. You know, uh, I get my beauty sleep. But um, <laughs> look, you know, it, it started with sweet and chilli. Yeah. I was in, I was a hospitality professional living in Perth, Western Australia. Li uh, moved from Perth to London, um, big smoke, big dreams. Mm -hmm. Decided that that was for me. Really uh, got my grounding there. Mm -hmm. Found my niche within hospitality and bars and mm -hmm. drinks and that was where my passion was. H how old were you at this stage out of interest? Uh, 24. Yeah. No, yeah, probably no surprise. That was where your uh, passion led you to. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> right. Well, it was, it was hotels and concierge work to start with. Okay. Went to restaurants which led to bars. And that's, yep. uh, after a little bit of time working in, Sweet and Ch uh, working in London, I, I met my business partner, Alan, started with Sweet and Chili. Yeah. So Sweet and Chili is, uh, I guess, a one-stop drink shop to drinks brands. Nice. Um, we do consultancy, training, staffing, events, ma marketing. It's like a bit of a, very much a niche for those drink brands. So what would be a typical example where they'll come to you and say, hey, we need help doing this? Like what kind of project is that? Absolutely. So uh, yeah, it's very varied, as mm -hmm. I said. Um, so they might say, look, that we've got a venue we're trying to impress or we're working hard with. They've got a great team, but they need training to take them to the next level. Mm -hmm. And we'll send mm -hmm. in a hospitality trainer mm -hmm. and that can do the training for them. Mm. They might come to us and say, we've got a new product. Um, how do we get this to market? What's the best route? How are we going to get it into trade? How are they going to play with it? It's an ever increasing competitive world out mm. there. So we've got a few tricks up our sleeve and we look at you know how we can do that. Right through to, uh, you know so that's more of the consultancy, but we also do consultancy for venue side as well. Mm -hmm. So not just brand side, but it might be designing, conceptualizing a, a brand new venue within a hotel or, mm -hmm. or the like. Um, and then there's the event side as well. Yeah. So we do about 300 events a year here in Australia wow. for different clients. It's well. Pretty full dance card. It is. And so that's, that's sort of where it all got started. And I've always been passionate about having my own business. I remember mm. being you know, 15, 16 and people were going, you know, I'm going to be a doctor, I'm going to do this, an engineer. And a lot of my friends have done so well in professional fields. And you know, I, I wanted to open my own sports store. Yeah, and that was my dream. You know? uh, and I so you weren't back then being like, I'm going to be a drinks mogul. No, it was certainly not. Store. You know, and, and and as time sort of grew, I, I joined hospitality, fell in love with that industry, and mm. very still passionate about it today. And yeah, it turned into uh, still wanting to have my own business, but it yeah. was with sweet and chili. So we got we got uh, sick and tired of the. Uh, 4 p.m. sun going down <laughs> and you know it, it did call for home I, I tried Perth it wasn't really my scene after mm -hmm. living so mm -hmm. many years in in London so moved to Sydney and found a real uh, I found another home here yeah um, so Sydney's been good so we set up sweet and chili shortly after moving back here mm -hmm. 
we now have um, you know 50 to 60 full-time staff across wow. Australia and New Zealand which keeps us very well keeps me very busy yeah um, and keeps us very busy there's a lot of different things and you know sort of the the different um, services that we offer mm -hmm. Um, and then that's, you know, I, I guess that success of having my own when I, when I moved back here and setting up my own business, part of Sweet Chili was, you know, that success was like, well, why can't I do this and why can't yeah, I do that? Yeah. So instead of being another agency like Sweet and Chili, you know, we, we talked about, you know, what, what else could we do, which would be easy, I guess, but, um, make money when we're sleeping. Yeah. Oh, that's, everyone wants that. <laughs> <laughs> and actually, just before we, we dig into that, so you've obviously stayed in the hospitality space. Yes. Uh, what, what is it that excites you about hospitality? What do you love about it? Oh, th there's an absolute buzz when I walk yeah. into a bar and serve some drinks. Um, you know, it's going to do the events that I did in the UK and the things that I got to see and do. And mm -hmm. um, I guess, you know, serving from the Rolling Stones to, you know, mm. Kanye West and Fatboy Slim at different events and at their houses to, wow. you know, it's, it's taking me on a journey that I never thought would have happened. Yeah. You know? And I guess that I've got a lot of love for the industry. I'm passionate about it. I work hard at what I do, but it just gives back to me every time I mm. get to go and mm. do that. Um, and, you know, with the agency now, um, I get to spend a lot less time making the drinks and probably a lot more time in front of a computer, which, <laughs> you know, I hate personally. <laughs> go, go I'm a hands-on person. <laughs> no, I have. But, um, you know, I've uh, we get to give opportunities through some amazing brands who are hiring our staff to be ambassadors mm. for them. We've got to get uh, amazing opportunities giving our staff event manager roles. And, mm -hmm. and we've set up a, a quite a few careers in, in doing that ourselves. So, um, you know, it's probably changed from being on the bar to being a bit more behind the scenes mm -hmm. of the way. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's, it certainly it gives me great pleasure in what I do. Yeah, great. Yeah. Well, it's really great that you stayed in, it stayed in the industry, but you've got a, a variety of different businesses in there. So, so let's, mm. talk about, let's talk about the next one, the make money while you sleep. Yeah. So Cocktail Porter, how, how cocktail did that come porter. about? How's it going? Yes, no, very well. Six months in, six wow. months new. Um, so... Uh, you know, I was saying to you just before we, we started this podcast, but I could be still planning mm. to launch this business. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we've been planning for maybe six to eight months of full on planning. And at the end, we just set, we just bit the bullet and said, this is the date we're going to launch. We are going now. And nice. we did it. Um, have I made the right decision? Time will tell. <laughs> did I make a ton of mistakes between then and now? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, probably every mistake I think I could make. And you, but you must have learnt things that you never even like had no idea about. At pace. And I yeah. think once it was launched, that was the idea. Because if we had just been playing, it would have been something that would have got thrown to the back with all the other things that mm -hmm. were going on. We would have taken a back seat. We would have looked at, um, you know, potentially, maybe let's launch next month or mm -hmm. next month. And <laughs> let's get to that later. So when it's on and you've got yeah. time and money invested, yeah. you need to make the decisions and, and you, you need to make it happen just you've then. You've made all the announcements. Like, you're like, uh, oh, yeah, we're going to deliver No this turning thing. back. <laughs> so, yeah, um, so that was exciting. And, you know, I, I probably make three or four mistakes a week still. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's all part of learning. Uh, you're going out to mentors and trying to, you know, get ideas and, and understand their experiences. So you limit, you know, what you've done and, mm -hmm. you know, document how you've done and what you've done in the past and mm -hmm. what didn't work. So then you can, you mm. know, learn from that yep. moving forward. Um, would I have gone, would I have now with that in mind, gone back and said, well, let's hold off for a few more months? Not again, like absolutely not. I, I still would have launched when I launched, made right. the mistakes, done what I've done um, and got to this point here today. Yeah, so, that's awesome. Yeah. Actually, so you just touched on there in the middle of that mentors, right? And you've yes. gone out to mentors in the industry. Yep. Uh, what's your take on mentors? How have you gathered them? How do you use them? Um, look, they're great. Yep. Um, for Sweet and Chili, obviously, I had my mentor in Alan, who was mm -hmm. the founder of the business, and uh, together we've launched also in LA now. Mm -hmm. um, and having him there whilst he is in London, having that person who will pick up the phone at any time, who will listen to anything, mm. is a little bit more mature than me because I can fly off the handle at times with things. <laughs> um, you know, having him there has certainly been great. Yeah. Uh, you know, and then after time, I, I feel like, you know, Sweet and Chili, I, I understand most of that business now mm -hmm. and, and probably don't need as much direction from him. And I find myself being mentor to the people within my business, mm. which is great. Um, however, Cocktail Porter, being an e-commerce business, and you know, it's a product that I serve on a daily basis, or we serve cocktails yeah. and drinks on a daily basis, but putting it in a package and sending it to, yeah. it's a whole new business. <laughs> so, you know, like 
we're constantly looking at mentors and, and people yeah. we can lean on in this space um, and you know tapping up people on the shoulder and said look you've done something similar can we sit down for a coffee mm. and, you know um, at the start it was like are they going to feel we're a competitor even though it's a bit of a different service or whatever I find that people in this industry are all really trying to help each other yeah. in the e-commerce like um, they, they want to see people succeed they mm -hmm. want to see you know good people do well so so that's been good and do you know through this um, uh, cocktail porter it's actually given me the inspiration again to get more business coaching for Sweet and Chili. Mm. So in a mentorship, it's worked really well because now oh, I've nice. gone back and said, well, Alan's taught me the business side of things and I'm going to get someone to really come in and this, the guy I'm working with now is really helping me on culture for the mm. business. Oh, um, great. So important. It is. And, you know, we've got 50, 60, 70 staff. I can't remember all their names all the time, mm. you know, and, and the people that I've never met in, you know, different countries. And, and it's trying to, like, me and to understand, like, how do I need to act as a person? Mm. Because, you know, I was learning a lot with Alan teaching me, but I was on my own here in Australia. Yeah. Yep. And so we're taking a back step on a lot of things, and it's actually letting me see how to, you know, plot the business moving forward. Yeah. So. And the interesting thing, 50 or 60 people, like, there is absolutely a culture in the business. Like, yep. it is there, whether you've engineered it or not. Yep. And so you, you better get in there and, and help guide it in the direction you want it to go. Well, that's right, because it could be a bad culture. Absolutely. Um, and, you know, at times, uh, I lock myself in my office and I'm, I've made myself unavailable because I've got so many things going on and mm. people are like, oh, you know, I don't want to bother Cam. And I'm like, no, it's actually, I, I'd actually like you mm. to do that. But I haven't portrayed that. Mm. I haven't mm. done that. So I'm learning every day as yeah. well. Yeah, right. um, and it's been, uh, you know, through that as we go on the mentorship, it's, yeah, it's helped yeah. sort of full circle again. Awesome. That's really good. Yeah. So Cocktail Porter, it's, it's a monthly membership. So you're sending out these these boxes each month. And uh, so I think there's a great business model. It's, it's one I had a little bit of experience with a while ago. Um, so what, what have you learned about this? What are the things you think you've done really well that you think others should emulate? Um, so what we did is work on the MVP mm -hmm. to start with. Yep. Um, we're probably now at that stage going, what's working and what's not working? Mm -hmm. So we launched mm -hmm. with a subscription. We launched with uh, a one-off. You could buy the kits as one-off at yep. a higher price. Um, and at the very, very last minute, we launched with bottled cocktails as well. Mm -hmm. So we've got our cocktail kits, which are DIY. You make them at home and mm -hmm. there's the experience there. There's the, and then the bottled cocktails. So um, now we're looking at what's doing well. The bottled cocktails are not necessarily talking to our general customers mm -hmm. for the people at home because mm -hmm. they want the experience. Mm -hmm. However, mm -hmm. they're working really well with corporate gifting. Oh, great. So there's, <laughs> you know, those learnings where you go and it's like, okay, well now we've made, you know, mistakes or learnings as mm -hmm. we call them. Um, now with <laughs> these learnings, we're like, okay, well let's direct this product to these people mm -hmm. and this product over to these people. Yeah. Um, so I guess, yeah, w w we're still in that stage. We're about to launch a new website. Um, mm -hmm. And this is something, you know, it wasn't a mistake of ours. Lemon Stan said they were shutting down. So they were like a Shopify. Yeah. So they said, look, we're shutting down 90 days. And this was only released about two weeks ago. Wow. So now we're like hustling. Okay, well, in 90 days, we're going to have to have another e-commerce platform. So we've moved everything to Shopify and we're about yep. to launch onto yep. that. So that's cost a lot of money and developers and everybody trying to work overtime to make that happen. And then just yesterday, MailChimp announced that they bought Lemon Stand. Oh, so, no. yeah, so there's, you know, there's a, you know, it, there's a lot of things that you just don't have control over. Yeah. Um, but you need to be able to progress and be able to move quickly. You definitely go back to Lemonade Stand and be like, hey, yeah. it does cause a lot of pain. We want yes. a really, really good rate forever. Well, <laughs> look, we're happy we're, we're happy that we're moving to Shopify. Yep. We, knew, we knew that there was limitations and a mistake was probably not doing enough research for yep. Lemon Stand mm. to Shopify at the start. So. Although it's a funny balance, right? It's like, as you said, it's, it's good to move fast. It's good to just get something out there. Mm. And, and uh, I, I think what a lot of people should think about their first version of anything, like the website or the e-commerce stores, is like, we are probably going to trash this thing in six or 12 months. We're probably going to go somewhere else, so don't get too caught up on it. Let's just move forward. So my advice would definitely be, you know, go your MVP, your minimum viable product. Yep. Start there. Yep. Just test it. Yep. See what happens. Don't put all your life savings into it. You know, you can do something, put a little bit of money and think uh, outside the box to try and get some organic sales. If you're confident with it, you can then progress yeah. and, and yeah. go forward. Yeah, but the, um, the perfectionist in so many of us, it works against that, right? Yes, absolutely. Like, <laughs> when I was, um, so the Pantless Postman, which is our subscription business, underwear and socks, I decided that I wanted to build the website. Like yep. I wanted to learn all about it and I went down this rabbit hole for months trying to figure out how to build the thing perfectly in this really great platform. And yeah, and I, I look back in the past, I'm like, I should have just whacked it up on Shopify. Throw it up. Yeah, throw yeah. it up, spend a weekend, then start selling. 
should have bought 30,000 sets of underwear. Anyway, yeah. long story. <laughs> but, you know, and, and these are all things, you know, like that would be my, my key part of advice. You know, yeah. if, you, if you're working to a shoestring budget or even if you've got a bit of funds behind you, but you've never done it before, you a little bit indecisive, you just want to test it out mm. and then trial. Yeah. You know, trial at a, 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 a small scale. Yep. If it goes well, fantastic. You yeah. know, maybe quit your job and make that your full-time gig. Yep. So yeah. And, 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 if it do, and it doesn't work out, well, so you haven't invested a huge amount of time and effort and energy. And but that's it. And things like Shopify, there's templates, there's, you know, a lot of places are just getting more competitive. So your minimum order quantities for different industries are becoming less mm -hmm. and less. You can actually just trial things these days mm. to see. Yeah, yeah, you know, absolutely. And, and yep. give it a go that way. Yeah. So uh, it seems to me like there's a lot of really exciting stuff happening in well, uh, all the hospitality area, but particularly in the alcohol area. I think there's a lot of interesting startups and uh, the more boutique breweries and now in, in spirits as well. Like, What's your take on what's going on? Yeah, it's, um, it's exciting for the industry because it's not stale. That's for certain. Yeah. Um, you know, we look at, we'll look at brand side in a sec, we look at venues, there's more venues than there's ever been before. Mm. In fact, you know, is it becoming saturation point for our population in Australia? There's an argument for that. There's mm -hmm, a lot mm -hmm. of places closing down, mm. which also breeds opportunity because there's leases coming up available. Mm. And, you know, the lockout in Sydney has certainly helped. Oh, it certainly helped. It certainly has not helped. Um, it's, <laughs> it's helped if you want to buy somewhere. <laughs> well, it's, it's hurt a lot of businesses, and yeah. a lot of my good friends have been put out of business and you know put houses up to mm. you know pay off debts mm. and things like that. So that's really sad. But you know, at the same time that be a cycle mm -hmm. and it'll breed more opportunity and, yep. and it might be in different areas. It might not just be, you know, yeah. across. But, you know, Australia wide, there's a lot of places opening up. Everybody wants to be in hospitality. A lot mm. of people want to open bars, they mm -hmm. want coffee shops, restaurants. Mm -hmm. they, mm -hmm. You know, they've been inspired by MasterChef and things like that, but they might not have hospitality background and training mm -hmm. as one. And you see a lot of people going out of business mm. in 12 months in hospitality. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a age old saying, but it's true. Yeah. Um, what, do you, what do you think are the main things that contribute to um, restaurants and bars or cafes going out of business? Um, yeah, there's certain things. Are they not moving with the time? So are they getting online booking systems? Are they making sure they advertise themselves online? You know, you probably do it yourself. You look at for places available and you book online. You don't often call restaurants anymore. Mm. It's like taxis. I don't know when the mm. last time I called for a taxi <laughs> was, you know. I'll use an app or I'll use Uber yeah. or something of the like. So you'd have definitely got to get up to times with that. Um, and then continually, you know, redo your offering. Unless you've been there and you're like staple and you've got mm. clients that have been coming to you. Mm -hmm. for and they come for you for the consistency. Yeah. And yeah. you've been maybe open 20 years, you know. Yeah. You've got to keep reinvigorating your menus and, you know, yeah. your decor and things yeah. like that. So that can be one, um, you know, you, but you might not know about hospitality. You may mm. have just taken on a lease that you actually couldn't fulfill the sales to mm. be able to pay that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the biggest things I do is invest in your people. Mm -hmm. Make sure your staff are happy, mm -hmm. but make sure you're giving them training. Yeah. And then they will continually improve and they will continually make customers yeah. happy and they'll come back. Yeah. If you don't, and you know, they just, staff move on in hospitality yeah. all the time. Yeah, absolutely, you know? high, super high turnover. Absolutely. And uh, I, I think uh, significantly under-trained on the whole. Like you, you can tell yeah. a venue that's really, really invested in the training, yep. and then, but so many don't. Yeah. yeah. And I think, um, you know, finally for me, um, you know, a lot of the people that I look up to in Australia is great hospitality uh, veterans. They're there at their venues. Mm -hmm. They're there washing the dishes at the end of the night. You mm -hmm. know, they're there. Uh, no, might not be. Non, uh, sorry, it might not be every night these days, mm -hmm. but it's most yeah, of the night. Enough to, you know, to keep a finger on the pulse. Exactly. Be, yep. They're there. They're there at uh, some point during the week to check up, to say hello to the you know general, uh, the repeat customers. Mm -hmm. the, the locals, I should say, and uh, yeah, uh, being there is one of the things, and, and I've found that really hard with a couple of different projects that I've got going mm -hmm. on. So the Gunmakers is a pub that I own in London with three other business partners. They're dear friends, and they're actually very astute hospitality veterans. Good they one. know exactly what they're doing. So I'm lucky that they're always at that mm -hmm. venue, but Rocco is a restaurant in Bondi, and I'm not there enough, and mm -hmm. I'm trying to, you asked me before, how do I balance it all? It's it's sort of like what needs me the most at times and you sort of divert attention, but mm. then you've got to make sure that you're not, mm. you're not, not missing that. Fire over here, uh-oh, fire over here, yeah. uh-oh, fire over yeah. here. 
Um, we've, we've recently put um, one, one of our business partners finished up another job um, and moved to Rocker. So mm -hmm. uh, he's a business partner for Rocker. So he's there day and night at the moment. Right. And that's, that, there's a direct correlation between him being there and mm -hmm. our profit going up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, you know, th th it, it shows if you can be there, yep. you know, you're, you're, you're in yep. much safer hands. So the idea of like investing in a, investing in a restaurant, being a silent partner and it's just going to run itself and make you lots of money is oh, a that's bit of a pipe the dream, dream. isn't it? You yeah. know, you can roll on in, there's a table waiting free for wine. you, there's free wine, <laughs> there's people, you know, coming to shake your hand. It's, yeah. it's you know, think twice before jumping into <laughs> hospitality if you think that's the dream because I can tell you yeah. with... Uh, a lot of experience that it's certainly not that. Yeah. It's a lot of hard work. Well, people need to hear that. Absolutely. Yeah. So well, I'd love to hear a bit more about Rocker Bar, actually. So uh, you've had that for a couple of years now. That's two years in the making. Yeah, in uh, North Bondi there. North Bondi. Yeah. Um, I was living in Bondi, uh, recently moved to Paddington, but close yeah. enough by. Um, and yeah, it's going really well. We were, uh, first year was really tough. Mm -hmm. um, it was really tough for a lot of people around us. Mm -hmm. We saw about six restaurants or oh, venues wow. closed down in Bondi over that time. Okay. Um, this year has been a lot better. It's making a profit now, and mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's. Uh, I try to get down there a bit more, mm -hmm. but you know, that's with Darren Robertson, who owns about five other restaurants, Three mm -hmm. Blue Ducks, and a couple of others. So, oh, yeah. Um, you know, we're in some good hands. We've got some good people. There's uh, good natured people. People, our head chef Stu's been there since day one, and now our business partner Ian, mm -hmm. our fourth business partner, he's there full time. So, mm. yeah, if I'll give it a little plug. If you can get down there, <laughs> please do. It's a great little place on a Sunday afternoon. I've heard you talk about um, Bondi being quite seasonal, right? Yes. Summer, it's booming, and winter, you know, far fewer people in there. Yep. And the importance of making sure that locals are, are coming back and being your regulars. Mm -hmm. you know, how do you, how do you do that? Well, yeah. Having Ian there certainly helped because he's yep. now managing front of house yep. and he's there to really inspire locals to want to come back. There's so much competition mm -hmm. across Australia in most little uh, hot spots of hospitality hubs. So um, him being there has, you know, that people build up that rapport with him and they want to go back for their coffee there. They want to go back for their mm -hmm. lunch or dinner there. So, mm -hmm. so that certainly helped. Yep. Yeah. So the relationship side is, is absolutely. Yeah, yep. absolutely. Yep. Okay, so uh, if, so I'm a I'm a young guy or girl wanting to get in the hospitality game. Yep. Uh, you know, I could go down the route of like I want to get it at my own venue, mm -hmm. which a lot of people dream of, or I could start looking into the space of like, you know, there's all this technology coming to the game, and there's all this other opportunity. Mm. Like, uh, what would be your advice or recommendation for someone that wanting to get into the space? Yeah, absolutely. I think the first thing to do is get hands-on training. Be yeah. in hospitality. Okay. I think everyone should go through hospitality and learn manners. Yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a huge advocate. I reckon everyone's first job yeah. should be in hospitality. I, I, I totally agree with you. And, uh, you know, you have fun doing it as yep. well, and that's why I fell in love with it. But um, you have to get that hands-on training. There's no point trying to sell something from a tech side, like yeah. with cocktail porter, unless you can make the drinks, or unless mm -hmm. you can do it. Because how are you going to be able to yeah. create or curate a menu yep. over six months without knowing what's actually, going yeah. on? Actually, yeah, so, so that's actually just reminding me of something of, um, so we talked earlier about Marley Spoon being an inspiration, mm. and I think Marley Spoon is a fantastic service. I also think HelloFresh is a fantastic service. Mm. So actually, back on that one, and you can tell from the first time we tried it to now, they brought in some people with uh, they step change improvement in their quality of what they put together and sort of the adventurousness of the menu. Like you could tell they brought in some more um, sophisticated hospitality people to really drive it forward. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, if you want that repeat customer, you're going to have to keep upping your game yeah. at all times because yeah. you know, HelloFresh started, then Marley Spoon started. And yeah. Surely, if people see that's going well, they'll probably start something yep. similar. Yeah. You know? And um, <laughs> but I, if, I, if it's a bunch of techie guys who have never cooked a meal in their life, well, it might not go but, that far. Well, that's it. And, <laughs> and so that's why I say the first thing to do: get the actual hands-on training because yep. that will help you a lot in the long run. Yeah. Um, it's funny you speak of Marley Spoon because it's a massive inspiration for cocktail porter. Mm -hmm. I was uh, subscribing, and you know, I was working 80, 90 hours a week. I didn't want to have takeaway all the time. There's Marley Spoon. It's one of my therapeutic remedies. Yep. Cooking, I switch off. Yep. I get in the zone. I love cooking, um, and you know, and making a meal. And I was like, well, people get scared of cocktails. They mm -hmm. go to a cocktail bar. There's a bartender there making 17 drinks at once. He's taking multiple orders. He's you know flipping and doing all the rest. <laughs> And, and I know what it's like, and people just like, I couldn't do that at home. And I was like, well, most cocktails have about five recipe, uh, five ingredients in mm -hmm. it. And usually it's like 
pour it all in, stir it around or shake it up. Mm -hmm. Everyone can make cocktails. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's what you know was one of the big inspirations to, to build this because yeah. I thought, well, if we can create something where all the hard work is done for you mm -hmm. and you're just putting it together, mm -hmm. but still having the experience of the entertainment mm -hmm. factor, mm -hmm. then, you know. And look cool when you do and it. And look cool, you know, <laughs> show off to your friends or, yeah. you, know, just, you know, just make them before dinner at, at a dinner party or it might just be your, it might be your vice, you yeah. know, you want to have one or two a week. So, yeah. so that was a massive inspiration for me. And mm -hmm. when I started looking into it, I found there was a couple overseas, but mm -hmm. nothing yet in Australia. Yeah. So. Well, I, th I see, I think that always spells great opportunity. If you can see like, you know, there's this kind of fallacy that you need to come up with the idea first. Uh, yeah. Like it is, um, if you can see someone who's done something similar mm. um, or even the same, but in another market, yeah. that, that means like, well, there's something here. Well, that's right. We, t we took what we liked from the other markets mm -hmm. and we sort of molded and created yeah, our make, own. Yeah, make your own, absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, it sort of goes back to a point before when you were saying, you know, when do you launch and, you know, we weren't ready, but you know, we're 80% ready. Mm -hmm. So we just launched at knowing, thinking we're 80% ready. Well, when you look at it now, we're probably about 20% ready. <laughs> um, but you know, you, you, you've you just got to give it a go at some yeah. point where, and you were saying you were a perfectionist. Yeah. You're like, we're, we've got a motto at the moment. If it's 80% done, it's 100%. You yeah. know, because we want to move at pace. We <laughs> want to make mistakes and we want to just, you know, turn it around and go, well, that's a learning. We won't do that again. So. Yeah. Yeah, that's really good. Mm. Um, I think you've, you've baked in some really clever things into the monthly, monthly package, like allowing people to build their bar up over the course of a year. W were they sort of strategic decisions or did it kind of just come out as you were doing it? Um, it, was, it did come out, but then it became one of our strategic pillars because we know that there's no reason it's a it's a luxury to have a cocktail kit delivered to your house yep. every month. Some would argue necessity. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well I'd argue necessity, but um, you know, for me, it was like well, a lot of uh, at home. I, at the time, I'd just moved. I didn't even have a, anything at home, and I was like, yep. well, if I wanted to start somewhere, where would I start? So this is a great idea for people that want to start up their home bar, mm -hmm. and over twelve months, they will have all of the spirits, they'll have all the equipment and they'll have everything mm -hmm. to, you know, to, to at any point just whip out and mix up any cocktail they like. So. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Yeah. So um, touching back on something that's come through, uh, on, we've talked about the different ventures. I, I hear that you have a lot of great partners in these ventures. Mm -hmm. uh, is that a, like a core component of having certainly multiple successful hospitality businesses? Um, sort of, yeah. I, I, I'd sort of split my partners in two. There's <laughs> my staff and my employees, yeah. and you know, I call them partners. Yeah. Um, and there's our clients as well. So yeah. um, certainly the staff go bend over backwards because they believe in the products, they believe in the services we're offering, um, and they love the culture that we provide in the company. So mm -hmm. that's you know, one side of it. Mm -hmm. Keep them happy, keep them motivated, mm -hmm. um, and they'll become your biggest asset. Mm -hmm. Without doubt, that yeah. will be your biggest asset. Then we've been very lucky to pull in a lot of the businesses that we work with in the drinks game to Cocktail Porter, mm -hmm. and they've been massive advocates for it. Yeah. Um, and we're partnering up with, you know, we get to create a new drink or a new package every month. Mm -hmm. So within that, pretty cool. we get to go and speak to everybody, you know, this is what we're thinking, this is what we want to do. Mm -hmm. And they can then come back to us and say, well, we've got this new product or we want to promote this or we want to work it into your package. So that's working really well for us. Mm -hmm. um, the other good thing about that is, you know, every Friday we get to play around with cocktails and make sure that we're going to be sending out the right things to our customers. The real reason to get into the game. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. Absolutely. So uh, and what's on the horizon? Like, so you're obviously a man that doesn't like to sit still. Yep. Uh, there's a, n a number of businesses already on the go. Have you got other stuff that you're working on? Anything that you want to share? Yeah, so this year was certainly about finding the work-life balance. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's actually been going better to where it was. There's, there's no way around if you want to be an entrepreneur, you're going to have to put in hard yards. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people look at it and they say, I want to be an entrepreneur these days. And it's yeah. like, well, what, of what though? What, they what watch, are you passionate they about? They watch the social network and they're like, uh, boom. Absolutely. And it's like, well, <laughs> Get ready to give up your life. Mm -hmm. You know, I gave up a lot of things. Of you know, I try to circle back now to a lot of friends that I just weren't making contact with. And mm -hmm. you know, once upon a time, if I had called them, it would have been normal. Once now, if I call them, it's like, oh, mm. what, what? You know, it's that awkward. You thing. do have the advantage that you can turn up with a box full of cocktails. Well, you know, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> but, you know, so the work-life balance is one thing for me. But the other one was, you know, we got this on the go and I've got a massive whiskey collection. I've been collecting whiskeys for years. Mm. Um, and I thought, well, we've spent a lot of money getting cocktail porter up, a lot of money investing uh, with, with time. But there's, you know, promotion, uh, marketing. Uh, there is building the website. There's a lot of different things that we've had going on. Mm. So why couldn't we do something similar mm -hmm. and put my whiskey collection up for sale and see mm. how that goes? Mm. So that's um, that's a new business in itself. So we're hoping to launch that in four to eight weeks, and that's yeah, going to wow. be called the Whiskey Mill. Um, we're not. This is the only plug that we'll get. We yep. won't be putting any uh, any advertising behind it, and we're just going to grow it organically and see where that goes. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's really cool. So you're just trying to get to. Um, I mean, there's, there, there's a very um, passionate whiskey market out there. Absolutely. And so if you can get the value proposition right, and you've got this amazing collection, then you might just yeah, you might have to have this sort of like this subtle but booming success. Well, we, we it's I sort of want to play them off, and it's a learning for me to be like, well, we've spent so much money advertising and marketing and pushing this, mm. and let's just see something grow organically. Let's yep. just see, leave it here and see what happens. Yep. With it. Well, if you really nail that product to market fit. Like it will take off. Well, hopefully. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm going to be watching with, with a lot of interest. Please do, yeah. All right, we've got a couple more questions to get through here that, um, that I haven't seen and you haven't seen. Okay. And we are trying to get through these in a, in a minute or less. Put me on the spot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's, that's what we like. So there's five, we've got five questions here, right? Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so first of all, what's the best thing about being a business owner in the hospitality space? Um, well, for me, it's the passion. I've always wanted to be in hospitality um, and I've always wanted, to, well, I haven't always wanted to be in hospitality. I've always wanted to own my own business mm. and I found hospitality my real passion mm -hmm. and I was able to do, uh, put both together. Fantastic. All right, next question. Shaken or stirred? Stirred. Stirred. Is that controversial? Uh, no. <laughs> okay, what's the strangest flavour combination you've come up with for a cocktail? Oh, I don't want to say. It, <laughs> probably a competition back in the day when I was trying to be fancy and putting <laughs> lemongrass and a lot of different things into a glass and being way too complicated. <laughs> and will not do me any justice as a professional in this industry. <laughs> All right, on the other end of the spectrum then, what's your favourite cocktail? What's my favourite cocktail? <laughs> well, do you know what? I'm actually um, enjoying my own creations at the moment. Well, myself and Tim Phillips made these, but our blood orange Negroni, which is our bottled cocktail. Wow, that sounds it's really good. Delicious, yes. Good thing you want a Friday afternoon. I'm, I'm getting thirsty. Yep. <laughs> okay, and, uh, and last question, I, I think we've, we've touched on this certainly, so any other words of advice you have mm -hmm. here is um, if a business owner wants to get started in the hospitality space, what's the first thing they should do to make that happen? Yeah, so definitely point one, understand hospitality. Yep. You can't just walk into hospitality and learn how to carry plates or pour a drink and be a professional. Yep. Do your hard yards and really get to know hospitality because there's a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and as an 18, 19 year old, I thought I knew it all. When I went to London, <laughs> I realised I was a big fish in a small pond in yeah. Perth and I knew nothing. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, certainly get into there before then going to the next step. Yep. Awesome. Great. Well, it's been amazing having you on the show. It's been great I've, to be I've here. I've loved he hearing all about the businesses and the journey and you're doing some exciting stuff. So Cam Northway, thank you very much. Thanks very much for having me. Cheers. Thanks for tuning into this episode of the Make It Happen show. I hope you enjoyed the conversation. And it doesn't need to end there. We've actually gone and grabbed a whole bunch of extra resources for you. Behind the scenes footage, videos from this and all the other episodes, as well as show notes that you can grab for free. Just head along to www.the-entourage.com slash podcast and you can grab all those extra resources. Thanks for tuning in and I cannot wait to introduce you to our next guest on the next episode.